July 11th, 2019, regular meeting of the Ann Arbor District Dis Historic District Commission to order. Roll call. Ms. Thatcher, will you please call the roll? Uh, Commissioner White. Commissioner Quijano. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Here. Commissioner Vacant. Um, Beeson. Beeson, sorry. Oh, no, let's start the next one. Uh, you have a quorum. You have four members present, so it will take three votes to pass a motion. Okay. Two votes is a tie and does not pass. Okay. Thank okay. you, Ms. Thatcher. Okay. Read the introduction page. Uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. I'd like to take a moment to explain the order of the meeting, specifically as it relates to the hearing of the applications on tonight's agenda. Each case will be called and we'll hear uh, first the staff presentation and recommendations. Following this, the commissioners who served on the review committee will present their observations and recommendations. At this point, the applicant will have the opportunity to step forward and provide any comments or additional information about the application. Once the applicant has finished, members of the public who wish to provide comment on the current case may do so while please noting the time limit of three minutes per person. Everyone who steps forward will need to state their name aloud for the record and sign in at the sheet located at the podium and limit their comments to the application at hand. Following any public comment, the applicant may be called back to the podium to review any public comments and answer questions that the commission may have. Once all questions have been answered, the hearing will be closed and the commission will deliberate the application, make a motion, have a discussion, then vote. If any member, members of the public uh, would like to speak to general preservation topics and not to any specific application, opportunity is provided during the public commentary following the approval of the agenda. Everyone who would like to address the commission may do so and will be asked to state their name aloud for the record and sign in at the front podium. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Your comments are valuable to the commission. And I would now like to introduce the commissioners. Commissioners Anna Epperstein. Epperson, sorry. Okay. Jessica Quijano. Okay. David Rockland. Okay, and I'm Evan Hall. Okay, so now we're doing approval of the agenda. Are there any deletions, additions, or changes to the agenda? I do have one change. I would like to move new business just ahead of hearings mm -hmm. so that you can elect officers before one of the officers has to excuse himself from a later mm -hmm. <laughs> petition. Okay, so that's G1 will move ahead of F. Correct. Okay. So then we approve the agenda. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You can do it by consent. Do it by consent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hearing no objection, the agenda is approved as amended. Mm -hmm. okay. Audience participation. Okay, this is limited to three minutes per speaker. Do we have any members of the public who would like to come forward and speak for the record? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is unfinished business. There is none. There is none, so we'll move on to the hearings. Nope, we'll move on to elections. Elections, sorry. <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, so G1. So, um, I don't even see it on here. It's on the other page. Yep. So, the election tonight is for a vice chair, mm -hmm. and um, the nominations, Bob White was the nominating committee. He's not present right now, but the um, nominations are for Evan Hall to be elected to be to run for vice chair and Anna Everson to run for secretary uh, and since you both have to vote I think you have to do these one at a time okay. <laughs> so you just need to um, somebody like to make a motion for vice motion. chair I, I, I will do that uh, I move that uh, Commissioner Evan Hall run for the position of vice chair. I support that. Okay. okay. You, say all. you 
probably say seconded, seconded, seconded by. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. Do I vote for myself? I don't know. Okay. Okay, now you guys have to do the same thing for the secretary. Okay, I move that uh, Commissioner Epperson um, be nominated for the position of secretary. Support. Okay. Seconded by Commissioner Quijano. Let's vote. Okay, so <laughs> I move, uh, or so I'm saying, what's my? Let's vote. Let's, Let's vote. vote. Yeah. Uh, all in favor. All in favor of, please say. Yes. 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 <laughs> it carries. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Thank you all. Okay. All right. Awkward. Back all right. to the hearings. <laughs> all right. So now we're on to hearings. Okay. We'll now move on to item uh, F1 hearings. Ms. Thatcher, will you please give us the staff report? So the first uh, hearing is on 403 West Liberty Street. It's in the Old West Side Historic District. This appeared in your packet last month, but um, the, the owner of the building pulled it in order to make revisions, um, which she has had done. And um, the revisions are, are not in the original packet you got last month's again, but there should be a separate handout um, at your seat. Um, and if anybody didn't get it, that's it right this there. It right yeah, it says roof plan on the top. Yep, you guys have it. Okay. So if you'll recall, this is the bump that we're talking about. It's uh, t to give a headroom to a staircase that goes up to the attic. Um, the existing structure was remodeled in the 50s. Uh, it's got a lot of problems. It's leaking. It doesn't have any sort of eave overhang on this edge. Um, it, it needs to be rebuilt. And as long as it's going to be rebuilt, the owner would like to do it in a less conspicuous way uh, that... Um, and the new proposal consists of a, a, a rather than a square box of uh, basically the two roof surfaces would plane down from the ridge the, uh, to some center point here and so a large uh, pyramid would be taken out of the middle of what you see now. Mm -hmm. um, note that there is a new valley here almost on top of the valley of the existing, right here, the existing uh, intersection of the roof and the gable. Uh, it took me a little, few minutes to get my head around this, but uh, I think that this is a great design. It works much better than uh, the previous proposal, I believe. Um, here's what it would look like from the west elevation. The roof ridge is up here a little bit farther, and we've got one shed coming down um, off of the gable, and another shed coming down off of the roof plane, and they meet in a valley in the middle. So the, the, the view from the front, from the north, looks kind of similar. It's got this, this, this shed coming down, and this is the roof of the other one that I just showed you um, behind. The, this plane is shown with horizontal siding. In the handouts, there are two alternatives. I didn't spend much time considering those alternatives, I do think that alternative one with the skylights would probably not be appropriate because it just calls more attention to itself. I don't think I'd have any objections to replacing this siding with a piece of glass, however. I don't think that that would make much of a difference and would probably give them some good light on the inside. Um, from the Secretary of Interior standards, I've got a bunch of them to read to you here. Number one says a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. Two says the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Nine says that new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. Number 10 says new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines um, for neighborhood setting, it's not recommended to introduce new construction into historic districts that's visually incompatible or that destroys historic relationships within the setting. This is a kind of an odd case. I, I don't know if it would be approved um, because it's so visible from the street uh, if it were proposed um, where there wasn't a, a, a bump already. Um, but this is certainly going in the right direction and therefore I do think that it meets this guideline. 
For roofs, it's recommended to design um, additions to roofs or dormers or skylights when required so that they're inconspicuous from the public right of way and do not damage or obscure, obscure character defining features. Not recommended is changing the configuration of a roof by adding new features such as dormer, windows, vents, or skylights that historic character is diminished. That's the one where if this were a new proposal, um, might not meet this standard, um, but it's making the existing um, more compatible. From the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Roofs, it's not appropriate to add chimneys, cupolas, or dormers where not appropriate. And um, uh, I think in particular, having an, a, a small eave will, will <coughs> help um, the dormer and the roof surface and, that, and um, protect from leaks. They have leaks in there right now in the stairwell. Uh, they've got mold in the ceiling and that's what they're trying um, to, to solve, the problem that they're trying to solve here right now. So staff does recommend um, approval of the petition and feels that it does meet the Secretary of Interior standards one, two, and nine and 10. And, um, and when we were out there, I just wanna note that, that the house is looking great. It's, it's, they're doing a ton of work to it. It's, it's really starting to look lovely. A bunch of, of um, catwalks and fire escapes were taken off of the sides in the back and the whole thing is just looking very lovely and uh, I do appreciate that. So uh, that's Steph's, Steph's report. Commissioners Quijano and Rockland were on the review committee. Uh, will you give, please give us your uh, report and recommendation? Sure. Why not? Um, I, I think staff's report was pretty thorough. Uh, we, we did, took us a bit to figure out what was really going on with the, the roof line and the, and the drawings. Um, but it, uh, we talked about how it, from that angle, especially from the recent photograph that we just had up, that it, improves upon this, appears to improve upon the situation that, that we have right now and talked about the um, having an eave extension on both sides of this dormer would help. Um, but besides that, the staff's report was pretty thorough. Commissioner Rock, anything to add? I would just add uh, that I agree <coughs> that the, this is visible from the street, it's, it's on the street facing side of that side gable. Um, and so you, you definitely see it. And um, yeah, what's there is like a flat roof dormer and a, or, you know, addition to the dormer. And um, yeah, I would describe this as like a butterfly shape. Mm. So low valley with high roof sloping down. Um, it kind of takes the corner that's facing us right there in that picture and pulls it down. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it would appear that that would diminish mm -hmm. what you're looking at from the street, mm -hmm. which I would believe is a good thing. So, wonderful description there. Okay, would the applicant please come forward and uh, provide your name for the record and please sign in. <coughs> good evening. I'm Jan Mulliman, and I am the owner of 403 West Liberty LLC and this building. Uh, do you have anything to add to the staff report or review committee reports? Um, not really. I appreciate um, Jill giving us an opportunity to, to withdraw from our last submission, mm -hmm. and I am grateful that Lori Sipes agreed to come out of retirement and help me figure this corner out uh -huh. and it is very it was very hard for us to look at it so I understand that it's hard for you guys to look at it as well but um, we're pleased with Laurie's solution and I think it given the internal structure of the building where we've got an eight foot steel wall and then an eight foot um, frame dividing wall it, on the inside I think what she came up with was is really the best that we've seen so far. Uh, commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Yes, Walker. I do. Yes. Hi, a couple Hi. questions for you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> first one is which alternative would you like to propose as like the primary alternative here? I would prefer, even though um, it, 
it might have some water leaking problems. I, I would prefer the glass walls and not the skylights. Because okay. I agree with Jill that I think the, the skylights are going to draw more attention to the roof structure, and I want to minimize that. And the okay. glass. That's and, alternative and, too. Alternative too. Yeah. And so I also, the, the advantage of the glass wall is it doesn't introduce another new material to the building. Whereas putting siding, or as they did roofing here, <coughs> introduces a new material um, that is not consistent with the building. That was my second question, was what materials, I don't see any materials called out. Um, so well, if, what materials are you proposing for this addition? Um, I guess I, I'd the, be curious the, about the, what kind of roofing it would be, and then what what is the trim, and then what, it sounds like there's not going to be cladding, so I want to ask about the cladding. Um, yeah, the, the, cladding, the cladding is now replaced with the uh, glass. With glass, right. The roof will be the same roof material as the rest of the roof, and okay. we are re-roofing the entire roof. So it will be similar in color, maybe a little bit uh, lighter tone. Okay. And then will there be <clears throat> trim, or will the window structure be all It'll, aluminum or something? What, what, what will the windows be made out of? And it's going to be an else? Anderson window. It's yeah. going to have Could to be you custom. Name? Sorry, oh, David Tarowski, builder on the job. Great, and um, basically, we're going to uh, match the existing trim color with aluminum okay. clad around aluminum wood cladded windows. Okay. They're, they're wood wind frame windows that are clad. I guess just to be clear, so the windows will not be the structure, though, holding up the roof. No. So, so what will the structure be clad? It'll be uh, framed with common wood, okay. no steel. Like paint, painted wood? Yes. Painted wood, okay. yep. Right. That's it for me. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Moving on to the public hearing, are there any members of the public who would like to speak <coughs> on this agenda item? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, do I have to read this? Like, read the sitting member, does the applicant like to review any? No. If it doesn't no. happen, that Just close the public hearing. Okay, close. All right. Um, commissioners, do we have any additional questions? I will now close the public hearing portion of the application. The applicant may be seated. You already have. Um, would any commissioners like to make a motion on this application? <coughs> we need to specify that it's option alternate, for alternate, alternate two. two. Yes. Is that yes, that's, appropriate? That's appropriate. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 403 West Liberty, the contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District, to modify a dormer on the roof above the attic stairwell, or stairwell um, using alternate number two as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the City of Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for roofs and the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for district or neighborhood setting in roofs. Support. Okay, seconded by Commissioner Rockland. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Rockland. Sure. Um, well, Kind of like I said earlier, uh, that I believe that this project, as proposed now, alternate to, diminishes what we're looking at from the street. Uh, we're talking about modifying a non-historic portion of this structure. So I think <clears throat> that we have to look at the standards in that way. Um, you know, Jill was kind of speak, speaking as it, you know, thinking about if this was a. Um, if, you know, if, it, if nothing was there and they were proposing this, then yes, it's a different question and we don't have to talk about that because that's not what's being proposed. Um, so I think I will support this uh, as, uh, as proposed. 
Any other comments from commissioners? Um, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Rockland on this. I think it, it appears to take up you know, the same amount of space and footprint as what's the, what is existing, but I think really making that butterfly effect helps the, the massing quite a bit. Right. <laughs> um, and I think it's a nice, I, I also, um, going toward the glass on the side as opposed to the siding, I think is will actually help it stand out as more of a, a, a newer feature as opposed to just putting mm -hmm. siding. Yeah. So. Uh, I agree with those comments. And, um, you know, the, is it standard 10? Um, you know, it, if this, the existing uh, bump out was removed or this new proposed bump out was removed, it would be kind of the same, essentially the same impact, which is minimal to the, the historic uh, property. So I think we're safe there. Would agree. And, uh, you know, the, the first design that we were given in our packet, I felt sort of made a bad situation worse. And now we're going the other way, and that's appreciated. Um, so anyway, um, any further discussion? So are we ready to vote? Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Uh, the motion does carry. Your application has been approved. Uh, you'll receive written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for and require permits from the city uh, before beginning your project. Okay, we'll now move on to item F2. <coughs> This is 420 West Liberty Street. It's in the Old West Side Historic District. This neo-Gothic bricks and stone church was dedicated in 1929 and features stained glass and large arch-topped windows in, a in the sanctuary. A corner tower with a crenellated parapet and a slate roof. The roof was replaced in 2015 and St. Paul's Lutheran Church received a special merit award for the work from the Historic District Commission. <coughs> Sites at the northeast corner of West Liberty and Third Street and the applicant is seeking after the fact HDC approval to install nine air conditioning condensers with vertical line sets covered by gutters. <coughs> um, these pictures will pretty much say it all. There were um, five uh, small mini split type air conditioning units located on the third street side of the church. And uh, I'll go back to these in a second and four more on the, the east side of the, the sanctuary between a new wing that was built in the 1950s. Um, unfortunately, they were placed there before the contractor came in for permits, um, uh, which, which triggered HDC review, and it's taken a few months, but um, now we're here. These units have not been hooked up yet. They're not operating, but um, the, the church has done all that they can to try to mitigate the problem of these mini splits being in plain view. Um, the line sets are actually probably a bigger deal for me than the mini splits, but they've, they've, they've put gutters over them. It's, it's literally rain gutter. And so now the line sets go up to a height that will get the cold air into the church, but uh, they're completely covered um, from um, about the, the, the top of this window sill here on up. You can see this one pretty well. If you're coming up uh, I'm sorry, down 3rd Street, going south on 3rd Street, you really wouldn't see these because your view will be, mm, do I have that view? I think it was the first photo. Was it the first one? Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. they're, they're behind <coughs> these pilasters. Um, uh, the only one that would be sort of visible is this one here. There are also a couple of, of very cool, maybe copper twisted effect gutters coming down that are a historic feature. Um, and this one is just paired up right next to it, and there's another one over here like that. So the proposal is to to screen these with um, a substantial amount of, of landscape bushes um, so that you simply no longer see them. The, the units are on a small pad. You can see there how the line set goes up, and then just a little bit out of this picture, it, it, it enters its own gutter to cover the line set. Um, so existing, these are mock-ups. Um, they propose to put a whole line of bushes um, in front of them. And this one's a little bit easier. You just block them out. Isn't that neat how that happens? On <laughs> <laughs> uh, this side again. 
Uh, an interesting thing about this is, and this is the, the plan view, an interesting thing is, I didn't put it in, this, in the staff report, but there's, um, I'm sorry, it's in the staff report, but not in the slideshow. There's a photo from uh, 1937 that shows a line of bushes around these, these lawn areas. They're a little bit closer um, in 1957 to the street, a little bit farther pulled out away. Um, but, you know, it's mimicking something that, that <coughs> was there historically, uh, and this was shortly after the church was built. Um, so I do think that, that leaving the units is appropriate. Um, I will say that there's, there's documentation that's been submitted uh, about the reasons that they couldn't uh, really do anything else to install air conditioning in the church. And um, they, they really did a great job uh, in person to me of answering the questions of um, what options they'd considered, why they couldn't run the line set lines on the interior. It's because the aisles aren't wide enough and they couldn't have something sticking out. It would be a trip hazard. Um, and what other um, options they had, putting them all on the other side or putting them on the roof. And, and running ducks inside would just be very difficult. And um, I, was, I was swayed by that. <laughs> um, so I, I think that this is a, a, a reasonable thing. Um, Wish that the contractor had come to us first, but uh, here we are today. So from the Secretary of Interior Standards, I've read 2, 9, and 10 to you already. For the Secretary of Interior's guidelines for mechanical systems, it's recommended to install a completely new mechanical system if required for the new use so it causes the least alteration possible to the building's floor plan, exterior elevations, and the least damage to the historic building material. So keep that in mind. This has some impact on the exterior elevations, but it avoids uh, tampering with the, the floor plan and the interior, um, and really has the least damage to historic building material because it's just one small penetration through the wall in nine different places. Um, that's a little more reversible than what they'd have to do to, to hang ducks on the inside of the building. <coughs> Recommended is installing air conditioning units if required by the new use in such a manner that historic features are not damaged or obscured and excessive moisture is not generated that will accelerate deterioration of historic materials. Um, it should be noted in that it was in the application and it was told to me that um, the, the, if it's 90 degrees outside, it's 90 degrees in the church. There's, there, there's a fan system, but it, it, it's, it's not um, adequate. And then if you put a bunch of, of, of church goers into the church, it's going to get even hotter than that. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonable to have air conditioning in the building. The Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines say that it's appropriate to install air conditioning units in such a manner that historic materials and features are not damaged or obscured, and using compatible screening around outdoor mechanical equipment such as vegetation and fencing. Um, you'll often hear me say that vegetation and fencing is transient and um, isn't a permanent feature and, and, and shouldn't allow um, just anything to go on behind it. Um, but in this case, I do think that it is an appropriate solution to the problem. So staff, staff does recommend approval. Um, and there are two motions suggested. One is the motion to approve if that should fail for some reason. Um, there's a second motion um, ordering the work to be reversed. Um, but staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioners Quijano and Rockland, we're on the review committee. Would you please give us uh, your report and recommendations? Sure. Um, well, I guess the, um, the one thing I'll mention here is the really nice renderings of, the, um, of what it's going to look like. It's, that's more of a concept than what was described. And I think what was described that they're going to put in is even nicer than what it looks like in, the, in these concept renderings. Um, I'd say as a concept, it's evergreen bushes hiding the, um, the outdoor units. Um, and what they're planning on doing is really building more of a hedgerow as opposed to like this sort of looks like big bushes, you know, in mm -hmm. front of the, the, the units there. It, it's going to come out that, that one on the right there in this photo is existing. And there's going to be a hedgerow that goes from in front of that existing all the way across down to the end of this photo. There's, there's, windows, um, there's windows there that we can't see right now. And they didn't want to block the, the light coming into those, those uh, window wells. And um, yeah, it'll just look real nice with like a nice straight <coughs> hedgerow on that side. It'll 
you know, it, it'll, it'll be a more formal look than this, which I think is appropriate landscape-wise, matching the, the formal building. Um, so anyway, that's something to comment on. And the other thing is along the bottom of the building there, there's really not any detail to the building that we're missing out on because of the fact that now we have to shield it. Uh, there's that trim, you know, that, that like water table trim that, that we'll still be able to see. Uh, and then it, below that, it's just brick all the way to grade. So there's, there's nothing um, that I think that we're missing out on by blocking it. Um, yeah, other than that, I'll just say like, I think they probably could have done a better solution than what they went with. I don't think that they hired like a historic designer to help them with this. And I just think like the last project that we had, they had historic architect Lori Sipes coming out of retirement and then they, they got a design that worked. And I just will say with that one and with this one, it's like if you maybe consult um, someone who works on historic buildings, that's what they do is try and figure out how to, you know, integrate these new technologies into old buildings. And, and I just think that, um, you know, you could come up with really clever solutions uh, that, that will, you know, solve these issues of, of how to, in, you know, solve this issue here. Enough said. Fair enough. Um, just a few things I would add. It, Commissioner Rockland's last point is, valid um, you know if you have the right tools for the job then you'll maybe have a more successful outcome but considering the engineer that they worked with um, you know I think the solution they came up with is probably more amenable than something some of the alternatives that uh, were provided in the report um, you know, on, on the roof or some interior damage to the building. Um, I will say that, so the, the kind of downspouts that are used to hide the line sets are a, a dark brown kind of in theme with the existing functional downspouts that are probably a patina metal, um, but they are kind of your standard shape and form um, not decorative or ornamental in any way. Um, and then the line sets themselves, actually in that photo, um, that one. So, you know, they're not covered in a, a black material or anything, but they're brown again. So they, they've put an effort there to try to mask it as best they can. Um, the, where the line sets enter the building through the brick, um, they seemed like they were pretty minimal penetrations. Um, they're not very visible to begin with, but um, if you're up close, maybe. Um, so that isn't too uh, conspicuous. And one other, maybe this is a discussion item, the fact that the, the fake downspouts stop where they s stop, where we see this photo, and they do not go up to the gutter like a true downspout would. So something to consider. Um, and then the, the representatives that met with us, they asked if, um, would they need to change the color? Is that something that we would be concerned about at all? So that's all I got to add. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the applic applicant please come forward, provide your name for the record, and please sign in. They did mention that they were both out of town uh, <laughs> today, and they were going to try and find someone to, uh, and there we go. Okay. And here we go. They oh, found oh, someone. Okay. <laughs> Coming. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Phil Clintworth. I'm a trustee at St. Paul Lutheran great. Church. Okay, okay great. Uh, I, uh, I did get hauled into this very uh, recently, yeah. uh, so I can't, I mean, I know the general idea, uh, I probably can't talk on specific details, but. Could you sign in just so we I, have that as a record? I will do that. Uh, commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? No. Okay, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to the public hearing. 
Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, commissioners, uh, do we have any additional questions? No. Uh, I will now close the public hearing portion of the application. <coughs> the applicant uh, may please be seated. Um, okay. Would any commissioner uh, like to make a motion on this application? I'll make a motion. Okay. Commissioner <coughs> Emerson. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 420 West Liberty Street, a contributing structure in the Old West Side Historic District, to install nine air conditioning condensers with line sets in gutters as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor the City of Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for mechanical, mechanical Equipment and the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular Standards 2, 9, and 10, and the Guidelines for Mechanical Systems. Support. Supported by Commissioner Quijano. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Commissioner sure. Rockland. Okay, so um, I think that this is like an adequate solution it um it hides what we don't want to see in a creative way um i think that <clears throat> if the downspouts went all the way up to the gutter that would maybe impact your sight line if you were just looking at the building up high so it is a little awkward that the downspout doesn't go all the way up but then also you don't have to see it if you're looking just at the top of the building um, like I said, there's probably other ways to do it that might be better, maybe, but um, this is what we're proposed, and I think it's probably okay. I will say just generally, we, we're probably going to see more of these because this is the most efficient way to heat and cool a building, especially if you don't have ducts in your structure already. And a lot of historic structures don't have heating and cooling ducts. Um, there's this article right here that, that we got passed right. out that yes. has, uh, yeah. the, you know, uh, the exact same system with a, with a similar idea going, uh, you know, with the, the, um, the lines running on the outside of your house. So maybe we need to talk about this uh, in our next annual meeting or something, and, you know, have it as a retreat topic um, so that we, we know you know what what are what's appropriate and what's not in terms of these mini split heat ducts because they are great and i support them but we need to make sure that they look good in our buildings right. um that being said i'm going to support this project okay any other discussion topics the hedgerow seems to mimic uh, the historic hedge that was, uh, you brought up the point that it's, yeah. it's going to be better than what showed in the, yeah. the uh, rendering. So it sort of seems like that's what they had originally. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so uh, seeing no other discussion, um, all in favor of this motion, please say, oh, sorry, are we ready for a vote? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, your application has been approved. Uh, you will receive written notice from <coughs> staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. We'll now move on to F3. This is 321 8th Street. It's in the Old West Side Historic District. Uh, this two-story vernacular home features an L-shaped roof, distinctive full-width field stone front porch with cobblestone posts and wing walls, wideboard trim beneath the eaves, and on the north wall, a red brick chimney and rectangular first floor bump out. The property first appears in the 1905 Mills Directory as the home of Frank Groff and his wife, Emma. Emma lived in the house until 1940. Um, this property came to the HDC in September of 2018. Uh, for a two-story rear addition, and this application uh, is basically a modification to that design. It's on the east side of 8th Street, south of West Washington, and north of West Liberty. It's two doors south of Waterworks Park. So the applicant is seeking HDC approval to construct uh, the following additions to a, the house, a 14 by 16 foot single-story rear addition, 
a six by 11 foot mudroom and an 11 foot six by 16 foot second floor addition on top of an existing kitchen. The additions total 475 square feet. Um, I think you were all around for this last um, go around on this house. This is the front of the house, the back of the house. I provided kind of minimal pictures here. There's more in the packet um, just because we've seen this so recently. Um, there is a, a cut stone foundation under this back wing and under this back porch here. Um, this is an area that you'll probably be talking about. Um, some of the same discussion points are going to come up um, that came up before, but uh, generally I do think that this design is an improvement over the last one. <clears throat> has a complicated roof plan right now. We can refer back to that if we need to. The, um, the proposal is to make a, a mudroom larger. The mudroom's the same footprint that it was before, but uh, you'll see in a minute that the roof line has changed. And the second story addition has gotten a lot smaller. This little bit of existing roof is preserved, um, and that also preserves some features on the back of the house. And this is the one story rear addition uh, that's being proposed. So um, let's see, why are we starting at the back of the house? Let's go to the front of the house. Here's the front of the house. So if you'll remember, there's a fire escape stair here. The stair's gonna come off, the, the little deck up here will remain, um, and you will see uh, from the front a bump out here on the side. Uh, it's a little over four feet. And on the other side, if you'll recall, this was the house that I called the, the series of, 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 mm -hmm. of angles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you've, got a, you've got a series of corners. You've got one here on the porch, and then you go to the house corner, and then you go to the chimney corner, and then you go to the bump out corner, and then you go to the mudroom corner. And it all stacks up very nicely. It's, it's, it's kind of unusual. All but one of those are there right now. Going around to the south side, here's where that stair is. Stair's gonna come off. And this side of the house up here is, is pretty similar to the last um, version that you received. This is the same way that it was going to tie in. There was discussion last time about whether enough of this corner was preserved here because it's just a little bit, but they did keep um, um, all of the eave overhang here to sort of distinguish that corner. Um, there are some, there are some non-original bits to this wall. At some point, this seems to have been a rear um, uh, porch that was enclosed. This is not an original window here. And now I gotta go back up to the one I skipped. Here we go, this is the back of the house right now. This is the, the kitchen wing. It's got a little pointed gable over the top and this is the back porch. So they'd replace this whole back porch and a large deck that's there now with this single story addition. Um, this is the back of the mudroom. And uh, see how this little bit of roof slope is preserved in the in the previous plan that that wasn't the case so I, I do like this one better it really squeezes the the, the second floor into a much smaller um, uh, addition and then relocates what used to be a two-story addition and condenses it down here into the one-story room that's sort of a sunroom look on the on the on the bottom and here's that sunroom again here's that roof mudroom design is similar but the, the roof is in a different spot. It used to try to tie in here and it was all kind of very awkward the way it wrapped around with the addition. Um, but now because they're preserving that little slope of roof, they can, they can change the mud roof, roof design. It'll show up better in the renderings in a second. Here's the new work here and here. And the new second floor is here. All right, so here's the new an improved mudroom roof. Uh, it doesn't fight with this uh, historic feature of the house or this one, it just kind of tucks in underneath them. Here's the other side of the house at dusk. And we've got the new sunroom on the back. Um, this is new wall here and obviously this is a new roof. So here we're looking at the back of the house from the driveway side Here's the new mudroom. Uh, with this design, this window, it's not an original window, but it is preserved in the kitchen and this, this nice um, original window for the basement and the foundation is exposed here, which is, which is great. I think that this, this addition is modern enough um, that it distinguishes itself, but it's very compatible with the existing house. 
And here's another shot from above. You can see that it does, it does project out a few feet, um, but uh, it's so low um, that I, 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 really, um, I really prefer this to the, the more massive two-story design in the back. Uh, I think that's a reasonable compromise to make. The addition is proposed to be clad in four-inch exposure cementitious siding with painted wood trim. The mudroom and the rear addition have rubber roofs. Uh, the rear addition's foundation is parged concrete. The doors are aluminum clad full light. Uh, window materials are not specified. The staff has suggested in the motion that approval be conditioned upon the use of wood or clad wood windows. Um, So the Secretary of Interior standards that best apply, I've read to you 2, 9, and 10 already. From the guidelines for additions, it's recommended to construct a new addition so that there's the least possible loss of historic materials so that character defining features are not obscured, damaged, or destroyed, and designing new additions in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is new. From the guidelines for additions, it's recommended to locate the attached exterior addition at the rear or on an inconspicuous side of a historic building and limiting its size and scale in relationship to the historic building. Also recommended is considering the attached exterior addition both in terms of the new use and the appearance of other buildings in the historic district. Uh, design for the work may be contemporary or may reference design motifs from the historic building. I think that this design does both of those, um, ties them together quite well. <coughs> and the one story addition will be visible from the street, um, but retaining the second floor, first floor, and basement windows on the rear of the house are desirable. Staff believes that the proposed addition is compatible with the house and adequately differentiated from the old and the design is, is an improvement over the currently approved drawings. So staff does recommend approval of this petition. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, Commissioners Kihano and Rockland were on the review committee. Uh, would you please give us uh, your report and recommendation? Sure. Um, the, I think, I, is it fair to say that the, the lot is kind of deep and the house mm -hmm. Um, kind of with its series of stepping um, kind of unfolds towards the back of the, the lot and I think even though you will see catch glimpses of the additions on either side the, the small mud room bump out and a little bit of the um, sunroom addition on the south side um, with all that's going on with the historic house and vegetation around there I don't think it will be overpowers the the um, the house much. Um, we we did talk a bit about the south elevation. Um, yeah, where is that? Um, kind of the, the portion that is just behind the the stairs that are going to be removed and. I don't remember the exact discussion we had previously when this application came up, but what that wall plane of the addition is in in the same plane as the existing house, um, and whether that is an issue or not. Um, it appeared that these, the stone foundation seemed like it was all of the same era, um, but can't say for sure. And so if that's the case, is that all, is what's existing now, you know, do we need a setback or not, that basically um, would be the discussion. And it's probably what we talked about previously. Um, but I think in general, it complies with the standards and guidelines and um, is an improvement on what we saw previously. So. Commissioner Rockland, anything to add there? Um, let's see. The um, no, I I have nothing to add. I mean that that's Fair. that was it. Yep. Okay. Uh, would the applicant please come forward, provide your name for the record, and please sign in. Do you have anything to add to the staff report or review committee reports? All right. Thank you, commissioners and Jill for all your wisdom at the bench. Um, at the downstairs. Um, I'd like to start with uh, just a little overview. After we got our approval last September, the clients and I started looking at all the stuff we were talking about building and um, 
the we 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 recognized sort of an overemphasis of the addition size to what they really wanted in the first place. And this happens a lot with clients where when the numbers come in, they say, wait, we need, what are we spending our money on? And they wanted to reduce the amount they were spending on the upstairs addition. And really all my clients wanted was a really good sunroom. And so we kind of went back to the drawing board literally. And it was kind of fortuitous because the massing previously, as it did with that mudroom, got a little bit glommy with the roof lines because I was trying to match things and then we had to separate it and it was that we realized I don't have to have that mudroom that tall so we dropped it down and um, we kept a pretty big tall sunroom because we'll just keep the first floor ceiling height but step the, the addition down a couple steps to give it a loftier airier space. Now with the first, that's the reason we came back to the drawing board and why we're here and then w with regards to the commissioners who reviewed it on site with that south facing wall, um, my clients have been over the past, I don't know how many years they've owned the house, they've been carefully scraping down and restoring all the wood siding and they've had to replace a bunch in the process and they sort of stalled out right there in the back and I, would, I said, well, I, my intention was we'll do cement board everywhere else, but that area there we will as if we will do it as if we were reconstructing a rotten wall, and we'll put in the vertical grain cedar, um, clear cedar siding to match. We won't try and put um, mm. sort of above the white stuff, the old white uh, primed painted siding. We'll graft and too thin new cedar into the existing. So that will be the one case where we will be trying to mimic historic, but it's the only wall where we're trying to blend historic and new construction, that south wall. Okay. And I believe it is an original <coughs> addition. It's just something happened in the roof line with when they put a laundry room on there or something decades ago. So Are you saying on the first and second floor you're going to? No, we'll leave the first floor. The first floor stays how it is. On the yeah. second floor, you're going to remove the historic vertical trim and. Yeah, the, where the, where the, at the top of the stairs where yeah. that green corner board comes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. we're going to have to tooth into there and bring it out the 12 feet. Right, okay. Would it help at all in sort of kind of if you use if your intent is to use at least on this elevation mm -hmm. um, the true wood material to match the historic um, material? Would it help to keep that green vertical trim board that we see at that corner to help well, make the transition? Well, that would make it a lot easier. Um, and is that? Something that the homeowner is amenable to? Is that something, you know, I don't want to change yeah, the design, but does that help? It, if we could keep it in the same plane, because I don't want to, I mean, I could step it back, but then we'd have a little rooflet right. on, the, yeah. on the ground floor. So um, we could leave the green trim and then make it look like an addition. Certainly, that because it will come to the cor it will come to the addition corner and come to a corner board, and then it will transition to the, the, the new siding. So maybe you're right. Maybe it would be better to distinguish that as a as a addition, and it would be a lot easier. Something to consider. Yeah. Perhaps. And um, one thing, Jill, is we we are going to do aluminum clad wood double hungs and awnings in that, and I will bring you the specs Good. for staff review. Great, thank you. Does that need to be added to the motion when we get to that point? Or oh, that's okay. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, it is right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else to add? Uh, no. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any other questions for the applicant? Um, I, I do have one yeah. question on that same, I guess, south elevation um, and the new elevation. Mm -hmm. It looks like the roof line 
for the new part of the roof would carry, would be continuous, so it would match the same height as the existing. Um, a lot of times with new additions, we ask that there be some distinction between the roof line as well, from the new to the old. So is oh, that how I see. Um, mean compared to the north side of that? Yeah, so if you look at the south, you have a south elevation. Mm -hmm. um, the rear part of the, I guess it's the new roof, correct? That's yes. coming straight yes. off. This new roof? That's all new, correct? Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. And that's at the same height as the existing. Oh. It's not stepped out. Right. Oh, yeah. We, um, yeah, we dropped, in order to get that roof to, have the pitches match uh -huh. and the roofs to uh, we're already down to about a five foot wall on okay. the outside so, so I didn't want to come down lower right because then we're, we're starting to lose usable floor space okay. up there okay yeah my first efforts had it a, a seven foot wall and then we were about two feet above mm -hmm. the okay. line, so. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, moving on to the public hearing. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay. I will now close the public hearing of the uh, portion of this application. The applicant may be seated. Uh, <laughs> Would any commissioners like to make a motion on this application? I'll make a motion. Okay. Commissioner okay. Kihana will make the motion. All right. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 321 8th Street, a contributing property in the old west side historic district, to construct a single story rear addition a mudroom, and a second floor addition on top of an existing kitchen on the following condition, that a staff approval is applied for and received for windows on the addition that are wood or wood clad and meet the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines. The work is as conditioned is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the City of Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for all additions and the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for new additions, district, or neighborhood setting, building site, and windows. Seconded. Seconded by Commissioner Rockland. <clears throat> okay, is there any discussion on the motion? Sure. Commissioner Rockland. Well, the... Um, First of all, looking at the Sanborn map on the first page there of the staff report, it looks like in the southeast corner there, maybe that was a porch that was filled in at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about that. But that's, you know, the, I guess that's why that exists as it is. It's, it's not, um, was it filled in as a historic infill, Jill, or do you know when that? Happen. Mm, um, I don't assume that it's not. Then I guess. It's, it, it, although, so it, it's hard to say. What, like, was the foundation built as the you know the porch foundation, right. and that was the porch, and then at some point, we don't know. I guess it was infilled, but I, I do think it has a lot of. Um, it's sort of key to this addition being approved or not. I think is is that south wall there and how it meets the other historic part of the house because I feel like um, the other parts of the proposal here um, to me are meeting the standards um, quite easily although we are losing like the the one-story historic part of the back of this house basically is lost I would say that you know yes the foundation is there but I don't think you can't read the massing of that one story um, in the new addition. Mm -hmm. So wh while I, I do appreciate that like certain portions are being saved, um, I'd say as a whole, you're not gonna be able to really you know, rebuild that other than you will have the footprint of the foundation, but I don't really think that's enough. But since this is a deep lot, it's in the middle of the block, um, you know, I think it's 
it's uh, it's appropriate to um, to be able to build um, this this as proposed. Although I will say that I do want to talk about the south wall. Um, but before I do, I will just mention like the roof ridge. I feel like with the roof ridge matching the historic height, it's really easy to visualize the addition as a whole, as like a single entity. So matching the roof ridge, um, it's still distinguishable um, as an addition. So I feel like that still can meet the standards. Um, but what, what is trickier is on the south wall where it, it's just flush, you know, the second story is flush with the um, with the historic wall, so I'd say at the very least, keeping that vertical trim would be appropriate. I mean, that's like the very least you could do to distinguish old from new in this case. I mean, mm -hmm. ideally, you're insetting um, that's that whole back portion in, let's say, a foot. Um, to distinguish it, but we have that existing first story wall. So, you know, I, I would say that if the owner doesn't want to distinguish it, then, you know, you're talking about adding some structural complication to this project to distinguish it. And I feel like since that porch was infilled at some point, um, that, and that porch is flush, that kind of opens the door then to say, well, you know, you really can't expect, uh, you know, the foundation is flush, the first floor is flush. Well, I'd say it's okay for the second story to be flush in this case, um, even though generally it sh I, I do feel like it should be uh, inset. Um, so I would say, uh, kind of circling back, I do believe that that vertical trim should be saved, so at the very least, um, you know, we're distinguishing that, and it's going to be easier to build that way anyway. So um, that's all my comments. Thank you. Any other discussion? I mean, I, I agree with the, at, at least maintaining some sort of delineation, if as much as we can, between um, the, the addition and the existing building. Um, you know, acknowledging any construction complications that offsetting that wall would cause. Um, I'm just curious, Jill, do you have, you had a photo from our visit of that wall, right? I just can't remember the extent of that vertical trim. It just goes oh. to the roof probably of that porch yeah. mm -hmm. about right mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. probably a, f like the freeze board of that on porch. that one story, that white board there too, yeah. that's kind of scraped up. Um, right. It's possible that if, if that meat. <laughs> meets the vertical trim, then maybe you'd consider saving that too. Mm -hmm. So like the vertical trim just doesn't disappear into nothingness or, you know, into the base. You could bring it back to the addition, if, you know. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, maybe that would help. But yeah, I think certainly you, the vertical, but. Right. I think you mentioned in your comments that if you left the vertical, there might also be a rooflet on that same side, so it might end up looking somewhat similar to what's here if there was another uh, horizontal it trim. Pushed it back, kind of okay. Yeah. Right. But if there was something other than, if it was even just that horizontal trim piece as well, the, the freeze board that stayed, mm -hmm. or another little piece of roof or something that was there as well that gave an <coughs> orange or nod to the just to distinguish that, that portion. Yeah, the hor horizontal separation as right. well as the vertical. Right. Um, and what Commissioner Rockland said that it would, that board has to terminate somewhere, right? right. So. Um. I would support these comments. Do we need to amend the motion to? You should. Should. Okay, so that was Commissioner Quijano, is that? Yes. First of all, is the Let's homeowner well, and the yeah, applicant we don't wanna... uh, ex accepting us? Yeah, can you step up yeah. and you've already stated your name. Yeah, I think that we can wrap that horizontal freeze board and the new roof will be higher than that, so it will actually sort of die into the addition. Right. And yeah. it won't try and wrap around, mm -hmm. so we can keep that. We'll keep the old siding below. We'll start new siding above. Keep the green or the, the corner board. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll 
it'll, it will read like a kind of a Tetris edition. So you won't have to tooth in the, like the I won't have to tooth it in. You won't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, much right. yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good ideas. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, Commissioner Quijano, can you uh, yes. amend the motion? Yes, let me find my spot here. After the window? Yeah. Do you have to read the whole thing? No. Yeah. Just read it. Um, okay. Thing. I'm going to amend my motion, um, starting at on the following conditions that a staff approval is applied for and received for windows on the addition that are wood or wood clad um, and meet the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines and that the existing uh, vertical corner boards at the south elevation at the second floor and the horizontal fascia board on the existing first floor porch are retained um, as part of the work construction of the addition on the back of the home. Freeze board. Freeze not, board, sorry. Fashion, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Okay. Supported by Commissioner Rockland. Okay. So, we have any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. Your application has been approved. You will receive a written notice from staff. Please note that uh, you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to hearing what are we at? F4. Mm -hmm. that? Sure. 112 South Main Street is in the Main Street Historic District. Wait, yeah, that's correct. Uh, is that wrong? Yeah. No, nope. you're right. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Catch up the slides. All right. Uh, this distinctive two bay brick and glazed terracotta design at 110 and 112 South Main appears to be a circa 1907 1908 remodeling of earlier structures on the site. Unique features of the Beaux Arts classically inspired facade are the two symmetrical bays with large three part windows separated vertically by elaborate cartouche panels with floral and scroll motifs. Another distinctive element is the prominent entablature, which features a bracketed cornice and is supported by banded pilasters. The Meyer Shire Company opened in 112, at that time the three-story South Bay, in 1909, and in 1962 expanded into 110, the three-story North Bay. Meyer Shire closed in 2002. The ground-level storefronts were replaced during the 1962 business expansion. The current storefront and rooftop condominium were approved by the HDC and constructed in 2004. The addresses are 110 on the ground floor, uh, the addresses today are 110 on the ground floor and 112 on the second and third floors. So this application is um, for three new signs, a pedestrian scale bracket sign on the front facade, a wall sign near the back door on the alley, and a window sign on the back door. Um, so this is just a very lovely building. Um, see this, this um, column pilaster here? It's got some recessed panels. This top panel is where the bracket for the pedestrian sign would go. There's a close-up of it. Sign is designed to fit right inside of that. And um, the conduit would go up and enter the wall um, either in this, this small trim or just below. But again, this is not historic architectural features. This is a recreation um, that's just, this, this stuff's old, this, this transom with this, it looks like it's pressed metal, um, but this is not. Uh, looking down the row, the sign would go right about here. It's a little bit lower than uh, these these bigger blade signs um, and the MOMAS sign, but that's you know that's that's limited by um, the height of this this sign band area. Way down the street at the Credit Union, there's another sign right here. It's at a similar height to this one, but really there's not a lot going on in terms of pedestrian signage on this block that they really need to worry about um, being in, in keeping with. 
On the back, uh, this is the back door. A um, little bit of window signage, very basic wall sign. Um, this is a modern concrete block wall. Nothing historic about that. It's two foot six by two foot zero. Um, the pedestrian side does have some neon on it. You can see that they've uh, included the disconnect switch and this, this conduit here. Um, it does meet all the design guidelines for pedestrian scaled signs. Uh, the area is 4.27 square feet. It's uh, supported by two arms into the plate that I mentioned. Uh, the, the vinyl wall sign, uh, yeah, I already talked about that, it's vinyl. Um, here's the pr proposed location and rendering of what it might look like. Um, eight feet six off the ground. Probably tall enough that passing by pedestrians can't jump up and hit the neon like they're so fond of doing to other signs on West Washington that have neon. Uh, Secretary of Interior standards that best apply are number one, which is a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. And I have read 2, 9, and 10 to you already. From the guidelines for storefronts, it's not recommended to introduce a new design that's incompatible in size or using inappropriately scaled signs or logos or other types of signs that obscure, damage, or destroy character-defining features of the historic building. Um, I think that that is not the case here. This, all of these signs fit in uh, very well. From the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Signs, it's appropriate to install signage in the historic sign band area, typically the area above the transoms or just above the storefront, and to attach signage through masonry joints or through materials that can be easily repaired, such as wood, when signage is removed. It's also appropriate to install signage that's compatible in size, style, material, and appearance to the historic district and resource placing signs to align with others along the block, and installing signage that it's subordinate to the overall building composition. Um, this building has a lot going on already, but I really don't think that this will be uh, detrimental or harm any historic features at all. Um, and the, the signs on the back of the building are also completely appropriate, so staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. All right, Commissioners Quijano and Rockland were on the review committee. Uh, will you please give us your report and recommendation? Sure. Um, I really don't have much to add. I mean, it was just sort of a basic, uh, I think because of, of that block in particular, there's, like Jill was saying, there's, there's not many other signs of this pedestrian scale type to, to uh, compare to. And since it is meeting the sign standards for pedestrian signs, um, I guess the only other thing would be how they're mounting it. And this is a wood, uh, in a situation where they're mounting it into wood and they've very clearly said where they're going to mount it within that detail on the that um, that's pilaster column so it just all seemed very clear thank you commissioner Rockland. Uh, just that i appreciate that they've indicated where the disconnect switch is going to be located and that the conduit entering the building from that is um, pretty clean and simple and it's through non-historic material. Um, the, fortunately, the neighboring sign, one of them, it was quite sloppy, the conduit mm -hmm. and placement. So I appreciate that they've considered that and that's just something that we should be aware of. Um, for future signs. So. Great. That's all. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Would the applicant please come forward, provide your name for the record, and please sign in. Hey, my name is Kevin Short with Johnson Sign Company. Okay. And do you have anything to add to the staff report or review committee reports? Uh, only that Jill highly recommended that we make this clean oh. conduit. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? I don't. Okay. Public hearing. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing portion of the application. The applicant uh, can please be seated. Would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Rockland. 
I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 112 South Main Street, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District, to install a pedestrian scale bracket sign on the front facade, a wall sign near the back door on the alley, and a window sign on the back door. As proposed, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship with the rest of the building and the surrounding area, and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Supported by Commissioner Quijano. Okay, any discussion on the motion? I think it's a nice sign that is uh, clearly meeting the standards, and so I think I'm going to support this project. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that um, enough said. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll move to a vote. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion carries. The, uh, your application has been approved. Uh, you will receive written notification from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city uh, before beginning your project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank I'll you. move on to F5. Ms. Thatcher. F5 is 203 and 205 North Ingalls, a duplex in the old Fourth Ward Historic District. Um, First appears in city directories in 1911 as the home of Joseph Schuber in 203, a clerk at Goodyear's, and Earl Stewart in 205. It replaced an earlier dwelling on the site, features a large front-facing and two end-facing gables, and a smaller gable dormer centered on the back wall in the west. The front has two recessed entry porches on the corners, each with two arches and a brick and brick wing walls flanking the stairs. The historic windows are 10 over 1, 8 over 1, and 6 over 1, some with unequal smaller top sashes. The site's located on the west side of North Ingalls at the northeast corner of, uh, the north corner of East Ann. And the applicant is seeking HTC after the fact approval to install sashes for 22 wood windows that were removed and replaced with modern windows without a certificate of appropriateness or building permits. The sashes are replicas of the historic windows that were removed and would replace the modern windows currently installed. Um, so a rental housing inspector uh, went to look at this building um, several months ago and noted that the windows had mostly been replaced in the entire structure. There are a few remaining historic windows. You can see that the, the, the attic windows still remain, and they're, they're interesting. Um, but um, most of the, the first and second floor windows were, were um, replaced with vinyl replacement windows. Um, rather than come in, apply for the vinyl windows, get denied, go away, come back with a new application, um, the, the, the applicant, Chris Heaton, uh, opted instead to just do the right thing and propose um, replica replacement windows. Um, so I'm going to take you around the house. Um, in the, in the staff report, you should probably look at the staff report at the same time. There's a bunch of Google Street View photos, or uh, there's not that many, but they show what the original windows looked like. We have documentation on all but one pair of windows to know what should go back there. And there, there are one or two large remaining windows that um, are, are going to be used for um, <coughs> sash proportions uh, and, and, and the mutton patterns um, to try to get these as close as possible to the originals. Um, on, the, on the first floor here in these bay windows, uh, there were um, uh, six over one and eight over one windows. Upstairs, these were, I'm sorry, over two. These were all over twos. Uh, these were 10 over twos. Uh, on the sides were eight over twos. The, the two sides are, are a mirror image. So the windows on one side match the windows on the other side, which makes it a little bit easier um, to figure out what's going on here. Uh, then going around to the south, no, this is still the front, going around to the south elevation, um, there were some eight over one windows here, a six over one in the stairwell, and a, looks like an eight or a 10 over one here. Um, I went through and documented all of this so that we've got a better idea and sent it to Chris, and Chris concurred um, with, with, with what I saw. There's also a window 
uh, in here um, that also needs to, to be replicated. Um, this is the other side, the driveway side on the north, same thing. Um, if you look at these little windows up here, they're six over two, there's a pair of them. And then on the front of the house, there's this diamond over two. When we get around to the back, this window and this window are the ones that we don't know what they look like for sure. There's a Google Street View picture in your packet. It's, it's divided lights over two, but we can't figure out how many. So um, I would propose that basically the proportions be maintained for these windows, and it's probably going to be an eight over two um, uh, to uh, look kind of similar to these six over twos. Um, because really, I've exhausted all of my sources, and so has Chris. He's been to the Bentley. We've looked at neighboring properties, um, and we've talked to the tenants. When we were out there on the site review committee visit, um, Dale from campus management talked to the tenants, and neither of them remembered. Or um, he, he talked to one or both of them, and uh, they did not remember what the windows looked like before they were replaced. These, these windows seem to have been replaced over a couple of years, so it's not surprising. There may not be a tenant in there that was there when that particular window was replaced. Um, or we could just have them put a one over one sash in if you think that that's more appropriate. But I think I'd recommend, since we know that it had divided lights on the top from this little bit of a Google Street View, um, I'd propose just two rows of little bitty panes over um, two larger panes. Um, there's some casements on both sides of the back wall that were not replaced. Those are still the original casements. Um, and these small windows and the attic window on this side were also not replaced. Uh, the, the work is being done by Dustin Schultz out of Dexter who I've heard is a protege of Lori Sipes. And he is, he is recreating these um, as closely as possible to the original dimensions. They will be single paned, um, so they will have new storms. Um, I told Chris Heaton that double panes were uh, acceptable, um, but the contractor doesn't build uh, thermal paned windows when he's making you know, these historic recreations. And, um, the other proposal that came in was didn't meet the, the standards um, or the window worksheet. Um, so they'll look as similar as possible to the originals. Uh, this is another window that was replaced. There are a couple photos in here of, of the remaining original windows so they can tell, you know, what these mountain patterns are like and stuff. Um, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but this is the code that talks about what to do if the work um, was done without permits and it's inappropriate and basically it's, um, they can be ordered to restore it to its original condition. Um, but we're going to jump to Secretary of Interior Standard 6, which says deteriorated historic features will be repaired rather than replaced, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature. The new feature will match the old in design, color, texture, and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features will be substantiated by documentary and physical evidence. From the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for windows, it's recommended to identify, retain, and preserve windows um, that are important in defining the overall historic character of the building. This can include fr frames, sash, muttons, glazing, sills, heads, hood molds, paneled or decorated jams and molding, and interior and exterior shutters and blinds. Um, not recommended is replacing windows rather than maintaining the sash frame and glazing or replacing in kind an entire window that is too deteriorated to repair. Oh, wait a second. This should be recommended. Mm -hmm. This is under the wrong category. Um, let's try the next slide. No. Um, so this is the second bullet point is a recommended. Um, you should replace it if the overall form and detailing are still evident using the physical evidence to guide the new work. Um, so, um, staff went through the standards and guidelines and wrote them up here. Um, the, the windows that are installed do not meet the Secretary of Interior standard number six. 
because they do not match the materials and distinctive mutton patterns found on the historic windows, uh, and as a result, do not match the historic visual qualities of the original windows. Um, there's, a, there's a list here of the, the, the window types and, and pane patterns, and uh, the proposal says that the replica sashes will take one to two weeks to measure five to six months to build and one to two weeks to install. So staff suggests that the motion include a timeline of six months plus an additional 60 days uh, as a buffer mm -hmm. to complete and install the windows. I'm also working with the rental housing inspectors. Um, this, uh, this work, uh, I was told, might go to court anyway, but, but then the city inspectors will ask them to stay that for a while until um, they make it through this timeline. And if there are any problems, um, then they'll have both the HDC and rental housing, um, um, you know, pursuing them to uh, do something um, right away about these windows. But uh, the, 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 the campus uh, management representative has been very forthcoming about this whole thing. Um, he's been very contrite, and uh, he's really trying to do the right thing uh, and put these back in. And I do appreciate that um, because I've had some fights with other people that didn't go so well. And I believe that this is a mistake that was extremely expensive and probably won't happen again for a while with campus management. So staff does recommend approval um, of the motion. Um, and I would like to add that in the motion we should add the timeline because I omitted that. So, oh, no, I, I have it in there. It's the last line. It, it gives them eight months total. So um, staff does recommend uh, approval of the application. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Thatcher. All right, uh, Commissioners Quijano and Rockland were on the review committee. Will you please give us your report and recommendation? Um, I think the staff report was very thorough considering what uh, is presented and the extent of the unfortunate window replace removal and replacement um, without the appropriate approvals. Um, the, the recommendation by staff about what to do with the two rear windows on the second floor, um, I am in support of that. Um, the small divided light proportions over uh, over two. Um, it just seems that with with the documentation that we have of majority of the historic windows, and fortunately the the historic windows that are still remaining on site, um, I think that is substantial evidence for what to propose for these rear facade windows. Um, not much more to add to that. Well, I appreciate the very thorough report from staff on this uh, difficult project. Um, I would say just as in terms of a, like a review report, um, this house is on a prominent corner. So you can really see the front facade and then the other front facade mm -hmm. that's kind of like the side facade. And then um, there's two very wide driveways on both sides of this house. So you can see the other sides that aren't facing the corner very clearly also. So this, it just is a real prominent house right on the corner and you <clears> can just really see all of it. Um, so it, you know, it sort of speaks for itself uh, in terms of just the, you know, the historic nature of the home and so um, I, I guess the other, the other comment is, is um, that in terms of the windows, uh, it, the um, existing storm windows really take a lot mm. away from the house because they're the uh, like bare aluminum storms um, that are not historically appropriate. And uh, some of them, like on the casement windows, they're like double hung storms up against casement windows. And so I, I also hope as part of this, it sounds like they're getting new storms that they, well, first of all, we wouldn't approve those storms. And secondly, that they just 
thoughtfully consider what type of storm goes with what window, because um, that was like another takeaway from, from being on site. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the applicant please come forward, provide your name for the record, and please sign in. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't have to ask them. Uh, anything here? Okay, I'll now close the public. Oh, sorry, is there any um, members of the public that would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay, seeing none, I will now close the public portion of this application. Uh, the applicant be seated. Uh, would there be any commissioner who would like to make a motion on this application? Make a motion. Okay, Commissioner Epperson. I move that the commission approve the application at 203 205 North Ingalls Street, a contributing property in the old Fourth <coughs> Ward Historic District, to replace the sashes on 22 windows with replica wood sashes, sashes as proposed. The commission finds that the replacement of the original windows was inappropriate because it did not meet the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standard number six and the guidelines for windows and energy retrofitting. The owner shall remove the replacement windows and install replica sashes within eight months of this decision date. Support. Supported by Commissioner Quijano. Okay, uh, is there any discussion on the motion? I mean, it's unfortunate that we're in this situation. Incredibly unfortunate. Um, it really is. I mean, I guess the silver lining is there are some windows that remain and can act as our model, but still, you know. The applicant who didn't appear seems to be trying to do something to rectify the situation. Right. Okay. It appears that way, yes. Yes. <clears throat> so. Okay. So any other discussion? Okay, so uh, we'll move to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed to the motion, please say no. The motion carries. Your application has been approved. You'll receive written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Uh, we'll now move on to F6. Ms. Thatcher? And on that last one, I will convey the design preferences of those two small windows. Um, mm. I'll probably yes. talk to Mr. Schultz directly to uh, have him figure out if the proportions work and what size he thought they used to be. All right, 425 West Washington. This one and three quarter story gable fronter features a full width front porch, one over one double hung windows, and a sculpted block foundation. It first appears in the 1906 city directory as the home of William H. and Julia A. Julia J. Murray. Mr. Murray worked at Murray and Storm attorneys. The Murrays could have been housing speculators having built at least two other earlier houses down the block on West Washington. The applicant seeks HDC approval to construct a new one and a half story garage with a new concrete driveway and curb cut on 3rd Street and add a timber egress window and win uh, well and window near the southeast corner of the house. Um, here's the house. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a really, it's, it's a really lovely, cute house right on the corner. Again, very visible. It's one of the themes of the day. <laughs> um, you can see the sculpted block foundation, which is cool. Um, a little bit of stuff going on in the house is not original. These little corbels in the corners, there's a sunburst up here that were added. Um, quite a bit of things happened in the, the historic districts about the time that my predecessor retired and I took over because there was a little gap in there. <laughs> I can date quite a bit of work back to that time period. It's very interesting, yeah. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's, it's, um, I, I, I especially love the paint job up here with the alternating board colors. I think that's very cool. And that's all original boards. Um, it is on the corner. This is this is Third Street, um, and West Washington is off to the left. Um, this is a tiny lot. It's 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 thirty. Let's see. What did I say? Thirty-two hundred square feet, which doesn't give you a whole lot of backyard. Right now, the garage, the driveway is between the house to the east, 
uh, on West Washington. You can see this is the neighbor's car. It pulls in the driveway back here. And, and then there are two little pads, one on each property for cars right now. Um, the proposal is to cut a new driveway in on 3rd Street and um, enter that way um, to avoid using the tiny narrow driveway off West Washington that has very limited sight distances because of cars parked um, going to the Y and because of a lot of foot traffic in that area and poor visibility. Um, so here is the side. This is an important photo to take note of. Um, this house is closer to the sidewalk than the neighbors uh, and, the, and the house beyond them. Um, these are set back significantly more. This one actually bumps up a little bit from this one. So uh, zoning code requires you to average the front setbacks. The average front setback is, is a couple of feet behind this corner. Um, and we'll get to more of that in just a second. Here's the existing driveway going down between the two houses. There used to be a garage right here. It was right, a one-car garage. It was right in the middle of the property line. And when that went away, it couldn't be rebuilt because you can no longer put a structure on top of a property line. And you have to have required setbacks. Another view of the side of the house and the neighboring houses. So the proposed garage, it's a one and a half car garage. Um, it's sitting in the backyard here. It's, it's three feet off the property line on this side, uh, five feet on this side. Uh, and here's the new driveway that's proposed. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to read these numbers off of the screen. Um, I'll see if I can read them better off of the packet. I probably can. Um, so if you look at the, the edge of the sidewalk here, uh, there's 10 feet, 10.4 feet. No, there's, I can't read that number. Can you, can you below? It says driveway to sidewalk. Oh, driveway to sidewalk, 10.41. And then there's a number below that to the lot line. Oh, right. Which is maybe 8.96, 9 point, okay. anyway. Um, okay. It's very okay. So there's a there's a tiny bit of room between the lot line and the sidewalk right now. Um, you couldn't fit a car in this driveway without blocking the sidewalk, uh, which in itself doesn't bother me. You just don't put a car there. Um, the 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 trouble that I have with this application is that the garage is proposed to be set um, a little bit forward of. You know, here's the here's the here's the here's the front setback line. Um, this house is a little bit into the front setback. That's okay. It's a non-conforming structure. It's fine. But when you average these with the other structures, it's a little bit forward here, and the garage is actually a little bit closer to the street than the average front setback. So the proposal would require a variance from the zoning board of appeals to encroach into the front yard. Uh, this is the, the structure next door. This is the front. This is the covered front porch. So the driveway is significantly forward of uh, the house and a little bit forward of the front porch even, which really is going to uh, impact the views that you see when you're looking uh, this way because the garage would actually be a little bit forward of this point here. It's, it's, it's very tight. I mean, you can't really see it with all these angles, but um, let's keep going here. This part totally makes sense. Difficult to see pulling out of this driveway. Trees, kids, scooters, bikes, traffic, cars. Um, a, a curb cut on this side, even though it's not historic, um, I think could meet the, the, the guidelines and standards. The trouble is, um, this is a picture showing the garage that used to be there. You can see it right down here in this photo. Um, I'll come back to the egress window in a minute. Um, here's the garage floor plan. One car st stair going up. The area is 332 square feet. Second story um, has an office and a bathroom. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Roof plan, gabled dormer facing the street, shed dormer facing the back. Um, the, the, the pitch of the gables match the pitch of the house, which is appropriate and appreciated. Uh, the design is, 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 is very compatible with the house. Um, I don't take any issue with the design of the garage. I think it's very compact. Um, 
but unfortunately the, the lot is even more compact. So here, this, this shows, it's a little bit hard to get the perspective straight. This looks actually pushed back a little bit more, but um, it is, this front wall is forward of this front porch, and that I really think doesn't meet the standards and guidelines, which I'll get into in just a sec. Um, lots of good detailing given on the garage doors, the, the person door. Um, the Secretary of Interior standards that most apply are 2, 9, and 10. And uh, for building site, it's recommended to design new exterior additions or adjacent new construction, which is compatible with the historic character of the site, which preserve the historic relationship between the building or buildings, landscape features, and open space. And also retain the historic relationship between buildings, landscape features, and open space. It's also recommended to identify, retain, and preserve buildings and their features, as well as features of the site that are important in defining its overall historic character. Not recommended is introducing new construction, which is visually incompatible in terms of size, scale, design, materials, color, and texture, which destroys historic relationships. And also not recommended is removing or uh, radically changing uh, site features, which are important in defining the overall historic character of the building sites that as a result, the character is diminished. From district or neighborhood settings, it's not recommended to introduce new construction that is visually incompatible or that destroys historic relationships. Um, I'm going to go all the way through this and then go back to the window. Um, from the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines, new construction in historic residential settings. This gives us a little bit more pointed um, guidance here. It's appropriate to maintain the existing spacing of front and side yard setbacks along a block as seen from the street, and I don't believe that this does that. New construction in historic residential settings, it's not appropriate to place a structure outside of the existing pattern of front yard setbacks along a historic residential block. It's also not appropriate to introduce new construction onto the building site, which is visually incompatible, which destroys historic relationships. Um, also not appropriate is locating a shed or garage in the front yard or side yards in front of the main structure. This is not in front of this house's main structure. It's, it's a couple feet back, but it's definitely in front of the neighboring structures. Uh, it's also not appropriate to introduce new structures or site features that are out of scale or are otherwise inappropriate. Um, so let me go through my staff findings a second, and then we'll zoom back up and talk about the windows. Um, so the proposed garage is 20 feet 6 inches to the ridge. Uh, footprint is 19 9 by 16 foot 10. Um, cladding is cementitious lap siding with a 4 inch exposure. Uh, staff believes that the general design of the garage is appropriate. The use of high quality materials is appreciated. The multiple gables echo the design of the house. The size and placement on the lot, however, are inappropriate because of the small size of the lots, 3,200 square feet, and the corner location with a relatively large footprint of the garage, 333 square feet. Um, I already mentioned that it will require a variance. And because the front of this new structure faces Third Street, it should align more closely with the fronts of the houses to the south. The site plan on sheet HDC2 illustrates that there really isn't room to push it farther east for a larger Third Street setback. Um, and that's the trouble with this lot. You, you can't go any farther east. Uh, no, that's west. You can't go any farther west. And if you rotate it, um, it doesn't really help. If you use this driveway instead to get in there, it's, it's still got to be three feet off of this lot line. Um, and if anything, if you rotate it, it's going to make it even closer to the street on this side. Um, so staff believes it doesn't meet standard number two um, because it alters spaces and spatial relationships of the site and district by placing an accessory stru structure within the historic front setback area. And it does not conform to standard nine, which uh, because the new structure is not compatible in size and scale to protect the integrity of neighboring properties. Uh, it doesn't meet the Secretary of Interior's guidelines because the garage does not preserve the historic relationship between houses on 3rd Street. It's visually incompatible because of the size and location on the lot, and the character of adjacent structures would be diminished. It also introduces new construction into the Old West Side Historic District that destroys historic relationships within the setting. It doesn't meet the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines because it does not maintain the existing spacing of front and side yard setbacks along a block. 
as seen from the street. Um, the garage is not located in the rear yard. It's partially in the rear yard, but part of it's in the front yard. Uh, and it's inappropriately located in the front yard in front of principal structures on 3rd Street. So staff does recommend denial of the garage portion of the application. Um, now, zooming back up to the window, egress window is proposed in the back corner of the house. It's the least visible part of the house. Um, this is an entirely appropriate location for an egress window. It's got a timbered wood well. Um, once again, I can't read the screen because it's too small for me. The egress window is a two foot five inch by three foot five inch casement. Um, the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for windows recommend designing and installing additional windows on rear or other non-character defining elevations if required by the new use. And health and safety guidelines recommend identifying the building's character defining spaces, features, and finishes that code required work will not result in their damage or loss. And also um, recommends complying with health and safety codes in such a manner that character defining spaces, features, and finishes are preserved. And staff believes that it does meet these guidelines um, and standards. So staff um, has divided the, the proposed motion. You can do it any way you want, but it's proposed as the garage and the egress window well should you choose to um, consider them one at a time in any order. Or you can uh, combine them into one motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Okay, Commissioners Quijano and Rockland were on the review committee. Would you please give us your recommendations and uh, report? Sure. <clears throat> well, it's another corner lot. Um, this, uh, yeah, like the um, the third street portion, like this view right here. Obviously, I mean, it's it's so visible. I mean, most most corner lots are visible, but I think this corner lot, since maybe since it's a shared lot uh, or like a split lot, you would call it with another house. Um, this house is built very close to the sidewalk so that we're looking at a front setback there that's uh, it's like the side of a house but it's a front setback it's very close to the sidewalk and hence the you know the backyard is is also very visible uh, looking up third street um, there's there's garages on third street the garage is it's a dip, totally different situation. You know, the, it's deep lots that, so it, it's even hard to compare. You know, I would say, oh, well, the, those garages are set very far back, um, but it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily comparable to this house here um, in, in the layout. Uh, I guess things to consider on the site there, you know, there is that existing shared driveway. We did see a car parked there. There's like some ghost of a slab that's left there from, you know, maybe that was there from that original garage. Maybe someone poured a slab there. Um, there and then there's, there's maybe another structure back there that's very small and on the adjoining property. I'm, yeah, see, there's the, yeah, there's the small structure, there's a car. I, I'm not sure how they use their backyard in terms of parking right now, if, if they generally are putting one or two cars back there, or if they're using it at all. If, if we do allow a new curb cut, we're not, it's not the situation where we're moving a curb cut from one place to another. It's a shared driveway, so that curb cut would remain and the driveway would remain and then we get a new curb cut and a new driveway um, if we are going down that path. So that's something to consider. Uh, the backyard is not very deep, as you can see. So there are really limited options in terms of how they can get a car, because perfect place for a driveway would be, or a garage would be at the end of your driveway. You can't do that now because that's the middle of the lot line. So it needs to go to one way or another, but you just don't have that much depth to do it. So it, it's tricky um, to design a garage in this space. And you know, I guess 
that's, that's part of uh, the discussion today. Uh, the other thing to, to look at is that white fence that we see there that's at the back of the property or the side of the property. Um, that I think the second post in there, that was like uh, kind of a benchmark for us in terms of how far back it was going to go. Mm -hmm. we, we thought that it was, I think, going to go a little bit behind that post, right? I mean, we didn't right. have a tape measure or anything, but it, it was going to come pretty close to that post there. And um, so just when you're looking at like the rendering in the package, keep that in mind. Um, it's like, it kind of looks like it's a lot further back from that, but um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be close to that post. We can talk about that more in the, in the discussion. Mm. I think there, there is, was that tree, what, what's going on with that tree? We talked about that tree, but I don't recall. There's like that, that big tree there in the, in the back. Right. Is that yeah. being removed or? Uh, you know, I don't think it's specified. Yeah, okay. It's a good marker though because the property line is just to the left of that right. tree. Okay. Right. It shows you how, how shallow it is. That's my report, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cajano. Um, I would just add that um, Commissioner Rockland did point out that the, the driveways and, and the garages along 3rd, um, the garages are probably more in line and in scale with what's being proposed, um, but they benefit from being so far set back from from the public right away and from view that uh, it just accommodates that scale of garage. Um, we did notice, although I don't know, I don't think we have a photo of it, if you were to look at the uh, opposite corner from this intersection, you have the YMCA's lot directly across the street from this house and then uh, diagonally across the intersection from this house there's a, a blue home. and. It appeared that they had um, maybe a garage of this scale that's being proposed, uh, but the the house and that garage were again they were set further back from from the sidewalk, so it couldn't really compare them. Um, we were just trying to look at the context and see if there was some shared relationships there, but um, not nothing quite as visible and. Uh, shallow and setback is this house. So. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, would the applicant please come forward, provide your name for the record, and please sign in. David Atkinson. Um, first, I wanted to say thank you to the commissioners for the service that you provide Ann Arbor, and specifically to the old west side. Um, love the neighborhood. Been there since 07. Been in this home since 2012. So um, we're very excited about our garage project. I hear the concerns that you have. Um, I'm actually going to let Doug Selby, who works for Metal Arc just a, in just a moment, come up and address those with you. But. Um, I did want to say, Jill, I appreciate your comments around the overall quality of the garage and that the design matches the house. I mean, I truly believe that it's an improvement on the lot and thus an overall improvement for the neighborhood and the curb cut, it's just, it's a safety thing. So I hear the concerns. I'll let Doug kind of talk through those with you. If there's a way to get to something that works for everybody, I think that would be a fantastic outcome. So thank you. Hi again. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, also, hearing the concerns, uh, I would ask the uh, uh, commission to uh, consider the fact that on this very, very small corner lot um, that it would be difficult to place any accessory structure uh, without, uh, uh, that could park a car or, 
you know, be useful in many ways uh, without making it substantially smaller or unusable. Um, I did want to mention that uh, as it is, the, the um, garage is set back further than the house, uh, the, than the house at, at uh, the subject house, and um, is, is actually uh, much closer to the front porch of the, uh, the what is that, uh, uh, the greenhouse, the Dutch colonial, I guess you'd call that. <laughs> that um, and um, not only that, but it's more than 20 feet away from that house. So the only place I, I see where your view of that would be obstructed is really if you're walking along on 3rd Street right alongside the house. And I think you would find that you know, there's maybe a, a 15 or 20 foot um, area where your view would be obstructed, but you would certainly see that full view from where you're standing there, anywhere around there. Um, well, I, I lived, my first house in Ann Arbor was six houses to the west. Um, and while I do feel that a little piece of Ann Arbor was lost when the performance network burned down and was changed to the Y, I, I, I didn't miss the um, Saturday night brawls and the active drug trade in the area. Uh, but uh, when the Y went in, uh, it became a madhouse with parking and kids running around and nonstop cars and things like that. It is an obstructed view uh, from, the, from the Washington Street. Um, and I believe, uh, given the, the nature of the corner lot and the small size of the lot, uh, that, uh, uh, that we are, if you take this house into account, uh, the subject house, uh, that you know, with the averaging the setbacks at the garage would probably be within those averages. I believe it's also possible to if the council uh, uh, commission would, would prefer to move that back, maybe a foot to match up with that porch, that's probably possible, although it does you know, considerably start hindering the ability to use the garage. Um, so I, I do think that given the, the, uh, the corner lot and given the fact that there's uh, really very little space to put anything else, um, that in some ways, uh, you know, denying them the ability to have a garage should be considered. Um, certainly this could be, like I said, moved a little bit or at least shrunk just a little bit to be perfectly in line with that porch. Uh, but I do not believe that the, the view of those houses going up, this, up, the, uh, up the street would be obstructed really in any way. Um, I also think that being a corner lot, it has a little bit of a different uh, relationship to the garage than anything that has a, a deep lot where the only place to put it is behind the house. Um, this is behind the house. Uh, it's just got two front, two front yards. Um, with respect to the, uh, the window well, obviously that's the least visible place to put that and you can almost see it from nowhere. Um, but I would ask the Historic District Commission to consider the extreme small size of this lot and the fact that uh, we believe this would actually beautify the area and having lived there for almost 15 years uh, right there. Um, I can tell you that what's there right now is, is uh, less attractive than it would be with a house that, or with a garage that was, uh, was matching the character of the house and would be well constructed. Okay, so do we have any commissioners have questions for the applicant? The, the rendering makes it look like it, I guess I'm taking issue with the rendering. That's the best way to visualize what this is going to look like, and it just feels like a little bit. Okay, so if you look at the rendering, there's the fence, the, the, the Dutch Colonial has a fence that goes back, you know, perpendicular from the sidewalk, and then there's one parallel to the sidewalk. The one that's parallel to the sidewalk looks like it's flush with the front of their house. Mm -hmm. It's hard to visualize where that garage is going to sit. It, it, it looks like yeah, it's, it doesn't look like it's in line with that parallel fence, but it it certainly looks like it's We're just in front of that. The site plan here is what's being Well, the site plan, I mean, this is how I'm visualizing. Right, no, I, right. Like. I see. Yeah, I, see. Yeah, I get it. I don't. 
And you're taking issue with the accuracy of it. Is that correct? Well. I would as well. I just. <laughs> I. But I would be clear here. I think that if the garage was flush with the front of the house that's neighboring, I wouldn't have. Well, I wouldn't think it would. I think that it would meet the standards. To, to be clear, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it cannot be, be flush with the house. What it can be flush right. with is the porch. The porch. Yeah, with and with it, just two feet. What's that? With, with just uh, with just two additional feet, uh, the 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 garage would be uh, roughly flush with the front the porch. Front of the porch, yeah. Which is the which is the where the setback is averaged from. Is isn't that not correct? Yes, from the front porch. So uh, you know, I mean, I would argue that you know to make it barely able to fit a car and not really be able to fit a staircase for that two feet is uh, is you know, I, I would I would say that that is, uh, you know, definitely a, a issue for the ZBA, uh, but um, I, I don't feel that there's any visual detraction from the Dutch Colonial. Personally, um, you know, you you would have to be walking on you would have to be walking up the up Third Street right there, and probably for maybe. 20 or 30 feet is where your your view would actually be obstructed, but anywhere else in that area, you can clearly see the corner of the neighboring house, and you can fully see the porch. Um, but I, I guess I'd also ask you is like you know, where else could where else could we put a garage on the lot? I mean, it it it, it seems like um, you know, given the size of the lot, it would be uh, you know, could it be moved closer to the house? Probably, uh, could it be shrunk by a couple feet to match the front setback of the Dutch Colonial? Probably, although that's getting into kind of an extreme small size. Um, so you know, uh, we we have done our best here to match the the character and the and the uh, style of the house uh, that it's attached to, or at least on the property. Um, and um, I, I think that the the Third Street cut. Uh, curb cut is is just really a matter of basic safety and, and also usability of the of the structure. It would be, you know, if you rotated it to be able to use the shared driveway, there's a really sharp cut in that you'd have to make to be able to use the garage at all. But it's also just, you know, backing out into um, Washington Street there is not a small not a small thing. Um, so I guess I'd just ask you to consider the shape of the lot and the extreme small size of it. Consider the fact that this is using materials and workmanship that's consistent with the with the property as a whole, and I believe wouldn't obstruct uh, or diminish the the views or the character of the neighboring houses. With, in any way, with the possible exception if you were walking up Third Street uh, and only for, you know, 20 or 30 feet. So I have more of a comment than a question, um, or maybe it's both. But you asked, you know, where else could the garage be placed? And while I, I do think there is there is some room to make the footprint slightly smaller or shift it, I'm taking more issue, I think, with overall height of the garage and the volume of mm -hmm. it because we're, we've talked about it as it's necessity to have a garage and access it with a vehicle, but there's also a habitable space above, which is pushing the height of the garage up more so than w is probably required if you're just storing a vehicle. Um, and that volume and that mass is doing more to block the house next to it, and I think taking away more of the open space. Um, so I guess, I don't know, can you speak to the, to the volume? I, I think the design is really nice. I, 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 I think it, it, that all works again with the, the neighborhood, as has been stated in the staff report and the um, commissioner's reports. But I don't know if you can talk about that as well. Yeah. So, so you know, the the idea is that matching the roof lines, and you'll notice that the gable falls away. So I I, I do believe that you know, as you're walking, that uh, that gable as it rises above the one car garage. 
Sure. Just, just one, one comment on that was I had the same concern, and actually I don't know if you, one of the earlier iterations with Jimmy, it was actually taller, and I mm -hmm. asked him to bring it down, and so the garage door came, came down a foot and a half, I think, and to bring everything down to, to, believe, to what I believe is more in scale with what I see my neighbors having, and that actually helped with the pitch that you were just talking about. So just I've made some concessions around, around that. Mm -hmm. Just I just wanted to put that point out there per your question. I do think um, also, you know, you see the, the gable in the back here, and that is because matching those roof lines, if it was, uh, you know, to, to have the, the gable showing, um, I, I believe that at most you're adding a foot or two from what it would be if you matched those gables with just a one-car garage and had nothing above it and want, but wanted to match the gables of the house. Um, that, that's why that dormer is there, so that you can actually have a usable space up there. But are you getting to like a shed? Right. Like traditional. Right, like because if you yeah. look at the, there is an existing image in here, of, or an image of the garage that was there, and mm -hmm. it's more in line with what we would expect from a garage in that location with a more of a sloped shed roof as opposed to a gabled roof that would match the house and it's more of a utilitarian space and just a vehicle storage. Well, no question storage, and so. yes, and should should that that garage still exist while well, you know, it would be straddling the property line, but um, should that uh, garage still exist, there's no question that the Historic District Commission would, you would view that as a part of the historic house and I agree with that. Uh, there is many, many precedents of a lot on the Old West Side without uh, without a, a garage on it, being able to have a, 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 a second story loft over, the, over a, you know, a gable that matches the house, however. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that as a new structure that's not replacing an old one, I don't believe that that's out of character in the Old West Side or with the Historic District Commission as a whole. No, and I, I would agree with that statement, but it, I think for this particular lot and the issues that we're bringing up, and this is probably getting more into discussion. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, that I think that that's the the issue that we're talking about is is the height and the the shape of the roof and some other features that we need to discuss. In, in the in, my opinion. in the discussion, I I would uh, I would appreciate if the historic district commission would also discuss what would be appropriate on this lot if that was the case. Then um, it clearly you know the the flat roof uh, shed structure that you see so commonly in older buildings um, uh, when those do not exist on the lot you know clearly this is a shape of a garage that you see frequently approved um, and um, so uh, if if the if the, uh, the the location of the garage or the setback is the problem uh, you know I, I, I I have trouble seeing how the shape of the garage when it matches the house and when it's in character with what is typically approved by the Historic District Commission. Um, you know, if, if, that, if that is the case, then, you know, then, uh, you know could, could we move that back? Could we move it closer to the house? Could we do something to make that lot be able to have a usable garage? Because, you know, right now, uh, it's, it, the, the lot is small enough where, you know, I mean, although we are, uh, asking the would be asking the ZBA for a uh, a variance on it. Um, you know, there's there's very little extra places to put something on the lot, and but I, I think that our homeowners have the right to have a garage um, on the lot as long as it's not you know diminishing the historic structure on the on the property. I guess I have a question. I'm going to be blunt. So there's the. The functionality of a garage <laughs> and um, you know with the consideration of maybe even moving the curb cut for the driveway the consideration of pedestrian safety sidewalk given the activity in the area but if the concern that's been expressed thus far is for pure function of a car and a garage storage is um, is the applicant open to the idea of not having habitable space on the second, have a you know, half story, second story of the garage and stairs which widen the structure that's proposed um, as kind of, I see that as extra mm -hmm. for a garage. 
Um, is that something that's on the table? Is that consideration off the table? Because um, that may factor into our discussion later. Guys, the remember, omission. Remember, of, remember yeah, that you're not yeah. designing a new no, project I, yeah, here. I, <laughs> yeah, we would have to. Yeah. Yeah. That would be another. Yeah. 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 Would, they yeah. would have to come back with okay. yeah. a this new is, design in order to do that. Is that this is what they want and are yeah. asking I, for. Okay. So I would say, though, to, you know, if I can answer the question in some regard, is, is that I think that a gable roof on, on even on a garage would be, and in, in the, the one that is proposed would be appropriate for the site. Um, having it be a little, move a little closer to the house off of the property line uh, to accommodate a staircase, I think is, should also be something that, you know, being as that it's a new structure that doesn't exist on the, on the, on the lot, I, I fail to see kind of how different that would be in terms of shape and size and sort of, you know, a little bit wider, but still the overall feeling of it would be much the same. Uh, the character of it would be much the same. And, you know, there is the possibility that if you didn't have a second story structure, you could drop a foot, maybe two. Um, but the usability of that space on a, on a very tight lot with a small home, I would say, is, is something that, you know, mm -hmm. the lot, the size of the lot should be considered in the deliberations because uh, there's, you know, there's very little other places to put a garage period, but having it go an extra three or four feet towards the house doesn't visually impact the neighbors at all and does make it much more usable for the owner to have a home office. Doug, have you talked to the neighbors and have they input any opinions of the project? I don't believe we have. I, David, have you? I've spoken with the proposal of the colonial over. So we're talking about uh, Mark and Nardo were over my house for dinner a few weeks ago mm -hmm. to talk about the project. Um, they, they talked about, so we moved. The concessions I made about height were after my discussions with them, right? So I brought the height down and moved the garage off from the, the original site plan that Meadowlark, Mount Meadowlark had after talking with the, with the neighbors about the project. Thanks. Yep. If, I don't know if it would help, uh, you know, if we could get the neighbors to, you know, sign letters in support of it, things like that. I, I typically think that that probably is helpful for you guys to know that people are not opposed to it in the general area. But I don't know if that has an impact on the overall um, issues you're discussing t tonight. Okay, any further questions for the applicant? Not at the moment. Not at the moment, okay. So we'll uh, now move on to the public hearing. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this agenda item? Seeing none, uh, we'll now close the uh, public portion of the application. The application may please be seated. Okay, before this next, we need to decide how we're going to oh, right. parse this out. Do we want to vote on, for example, the egress window, discuss and sure. take care sure. of that maybe? So how does that sound to everyone? Sure. Okay. So is there a commissioner that would uh, make a motion on the egress window? Well, sure thing. Okay. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the portion of the application at 425 West Washington Street, a contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District to construct a timber egress window well and window as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design arrangement materials in relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for building site, as well as the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines, particularly as they pertain to residential accessory. Wait a second. That's not right. Particularly as they pertain to, should that say residential accessory structures for the yeah, egress well, window? Well, it should say something so. else. Particularly as they oh. pertain yeah. to? Yeah. Egress windows. Egress, egress windows. windows. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Support. Supported by uh, Commissioner Epperson. Okay, so now let's move on to, uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 
All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion does carry. Your application has been approved. Uh, you will receive written notification from staff. Please note that you must uh, apply for any required building permits from the city before beginning your project. Okay, now we can move on to go back to and have discussion on, oh, I gotta have, a, we have to have a motion, sorry. Uh, would there be any, uh, commissioner would like to make a motion on the garage portion of this application? I'll make the motion. Okay, Commissioner Epperson. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the portion of the application 425 West <coughs> Washington Street, a contrib contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District to construct a one and a half car garage as proposed. The work is compatible on exterior design arrangement materials in relation to, to the house and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10 and the guidelines for building site as well as the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines, particularly as they pertain to residential accessory structures. Support. Supported by Commissioner Rockland. Okay, so do we have any discussion on the motion? Yes. Um, I guess Sorry, I'll go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'm go ahead because I'm. Still well, I just want to uh, the, the point that you started to bring up about the height and the discussion of the shed. Mm -hmm. To me, that's getting at um, how the, the historic relationship, mm -hmm. not just the mass of the building how to impact the historic relationship on the site with the, and so it obviously lessens it, right? So to me, it's closer if when he has no gable roof because it's lower. Mm -hmm. I guess, is that where you were going with that? I just want to. I think, yeah, yeah. there's, there's two, two things there, two right? Things, yeah, right. two there's things. So let's clarify those. Right. It's the, it's the height. It's the height and the historic relationship to the house, but also the historic relationship to the rest of the site and the neighborhood and Correct. the setting. Yeah. That would be, I guess, um, and I think along with the setting, if it goes back to, I don't, did you have more? No, no, I just wanted to kind of make sure we okay. flushed that out. That's all. Um, so I was just trying to find the guidelines that, mm -hmm. um, If anybody else has any other comments for, for the time, please go forward. I just wanted to mark a couple of things. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. The, those were also concerns of mine. Um, and I did not mean to cross the line and start redesigning the project, but I was trying to uh, kind of clarify what we were having issue with there. Yes. Um, and that um, if there was any other way that we could get this garage to be more um, compliant, if you will, in, in meeting uh, the standards and contextual uh, other structures like that. So, and I know nothing exists there now, so there isn't like this replica garage that we could create and work off of, but, um, we do know what is an appropriate scale, right? For, or I would think so. <laughs> well, I think what I'm noodling over, mm -hmm. is that okay? Yeah. Um, that, like the applicant said, um, you know, that you should be able to have a garage in your yard, you know, um, which I want to agree with because it's a house, can, you know, this is, I mean, it's, this is like an urban area. Ann Arbor is like that, uh, a weird hybrid. Where, I mean, this feels very downtown urban right here. Mm -hmm. And in an urban setting, I don't know if you can really say that necessarily. Um, in a suburban setting, it's like a given. A house has a garage. And, you know, it's not connected. What do you mean? Um, but, yeah, so this, this site, does this site... Uh, you know, mandate a garage or something, you know. Mm. And um, it had like half a garage at one point, we know. 
Um, so, you know, this, this site cannot have a garage that doesn't meet the historic district standards. You know, that's the point of the historic district. So um, that's, that's just like this mental struggle um, where, uh, you know, this rendering looks great, I gotta say, but I don't think, to me in the rendering when I'm looking at it, it looks like it's flush with the neighbor's, not porch, but front facade of their house. And, and to me, the height, the, 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 the scale and massing of the garage is like a small house massing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I want it to be flush, not with the porch. The with porch the is a low massing. This, the two-story, I mean, it's, it's a one-and-a-half-story structure at this point. Um, to me, it, I think it's compatible if it's flush with the facade of the neighbor's house, um, which is not possible to build. Obviously, you can't have a garage on this half lot that, um, that of this scale. that You just can't have a garage flush with the facade of the neighbor. Um, so... So that's, um, that. I'd rather look at the photo that you took on 3rd Street, Jill, mm -hmm. um, because to me, you know, that will, okay. yeah, the, I kind of like that first, that. yeah, this right here, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. where to me, it, the, the garage is blocking the, it's like at the porch, and it's this, it's incompatible with the, the setback of that house. It will, it will destroy the historic mm -hmm. relationship between these two homes by putting something that close to the sidewalk um, in that location that's that big. Um, and that's, I like the rendering, but I don't like the reality of this photo and you know what I think will actually be built. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm heading, given the discussion that we've had uh, thus far. Can I clarify something with your statement that uh, any structure in that space would destroy? The structure that's proposed, uh, uh, I feel, right. destroys that historic, yeah. historic relationship. Yeah. I, I don't know, you know, propose something that's, yeah, maybe, I don't want to even want to say. No, that's fair. Know, no, that's fair. I shouldn't have put you it, it, it's, it, it's definitely the, the height is not helping, but more important than the height is just how close it is to the sidewalk. Yeah. Because right, part of it, there's a repetition as you go down 3rd Street with those houses that it's all. They're all the front facades with porches, and then you come down to a corner lot, which is it's always a just transition. a normal condition, but you have another small structure that's almost, it looks like a garage, but it's also, it is designed very nicely, but it, its volume is becoming more, I think, house-like mm -hmm. in its quality and it, its scale as well, and being more prominent than its neighbor that is facing that same street. Start, I think for me, um, goes against our guidelines and takes it out of the neighborhood setting. That it, do, it doesn't meet those guidelines and it takes it out of the scale of the neighborhood setting. Um, so I think as designed, I agree that it's not, it doesn't meet our guidelines. Yeah, I think the staff report actually did like a tremendous job walking us through each guideline um, and I, I agree I don't think it as proposed I don't think it meets the guidelines so should we move to a vote Is that sure yeah. okay uh, all those in favor of the motion please say yes all those opposed to the motion please uh, opposed to the motion please say no no, no. your motion does not carry uh, your uh, application has been denied you receive written notification from staff. Okay. May I? May, I, may I speak? I don't know what the policy on that is. It's up to you. You're the chair. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have no problem with it. Sure. I, I just wondered if in that written notification, if, if it would be possible to have a copy. Yeah. 
can, yeah. sorry, can you come up? <laughs> My apologies. Um, would it be possible to get a copy of the staff report? It would be helpful if I could see yeah. exactly what the considerations were yeah. in terms of. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you much. Yeah, thank you. Right. Cheers. Good luck. Okay, so now we'll move on uh, to item F7. All right, so this is a slightly unusual procedure. <laughs> this is a commissioner's petition, so he must excuse himself. Yes. Though it won't actually be considered at tonight's meeting because once he excuses himself, we no longer have a quorum. <laughs> so, so Commissioner Hall surprised. will excuse himself. Yes. Excuse Our new. Him. I'm going to remove myself. A new uh, uh, secretary. Yep, we'll fill in. I'm vice chair. To run the meeting. We will hold the public hearing, which has been advertised. Should you go through the whole staff? No. Oh. No. No. Don't go too far, Evan. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be quick. <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to go through uh, the complete staff report. It is available, but um, this is a rear edition that will be taken up at next month's meeting. Um, if anyone is in the audience who has been sitting through the whole meeting for this item, I will go through the staff report. But why don't you go ahead and open the public hearing? Um, so I would like to open the uh, public hearing for this for F7. If anyone would like to speak, please come forward and state your name and sign in for the record. Okay. Seeing nobody, I will close this portion of the public hearing. Okay. And this item will be uh, continued to the uh, August HDC meeting. Okay. Very Thank good. Thank you. Thanks. Good job. <laughs> That's a first for me in 13 years. <laughs> well, no, of course not. All right. All right, we're on to approval of minutes. Okay. Um, approval of minutes. Are there any additions, deletions, or amendments to the minutes that we have in front of us here? We have the June 13th minutes here. The green Belt Advisory Green Belt. Oops. I have the wrong minutes. No. Yeah, I was seeing the, the June minutes here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not I've, sure what the Green Belt is. But. Oh, no, I have. Yeah. Since, uh, I was absent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I abstain from voting? Or does it matter um, for the approval? Or should I? Oh, do we need to have? Uh, we we'll no, you should, you should. Right. You should just vote. Okay. We never have people and abstain. You can approve absent. I mean, I can look at them and review and see. Yeah. 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 Go ahead and take a look. <laughs> I, I looked at them earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legitimate question. I was curious. All right. What happened? Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't see any issues with it. Earlier. Okay. 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 We have all the people who came to yeah, support. Yeah, that's a big discussion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so we have no additions or deletions. Uh, if not, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say yes. 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 Okay. Uh, reports from commissioners. Does any commissioner have reports to present? I unfortunately did not attend the cobblestone board okay. meeting on Monday. I was at the review committee. <laughs> but enough. I haven't seen anything come my way. Any work being done on the property. Okay. Uh, could I insert a quick update yes. on Commissioner Quijano's last month's report that the porch was oh, being replaced yes. on the house? So, um, it is, uh, yeah, I got in touch with the park staff and they immediately um, submitted an HCC application with the plans and everything. And uh, it's it was not an original porch in any way. Oh. And it was last replaced about eight years ago. Um, and they were just replacing it in kind. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so that closes reports from commissioners. Assignments. Commissioners, do we have any volunteers for the Monday, August 12th at 5 p.m. 
August 15th, 2019 regular meeting. No, oh, she's got yeah. the wrong dates. Okay. It should be August 5th for the August 8th meeting. Sorry, Mia just filled in the blanks incorrectly. That's what it says. What do you mean? August 5th oh. through the August 8th? Yeah. That's not what I have on my my yeah. script here, yeah. sorry. Oh, uh, the pink the pink agenda okay. says 5th and 8th. Okay, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. um, we, we tripped you up. Yeah, that was, yeah, they do not match. I can do it. So with it, okay. So what's on the pink is correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we've got Anna. Thank so we've got you. Anna. I don't think I can do that one. Okay. I can't, Evan can't I do it. I can't volunteer unless I come to the other one. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, no. Okay, Jess Just so, cannot do it. Um, Bob. I will ask Bob and John. John. I will ask yeah, Bob and John it. if yeah. either of them. Yeah, Dave's done quite a few. Well, I could get a babysitter. Well, let's try yeah. to see if we can get Bob or John. Or I'll ask one of them if they want to babysit for you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Evan could babysit my kids. I could babysit. <laughs> That's not a problem. You can do that. Close bunch. Yeah. Okay. So that's we have two volunteers, Anna and Bob. All right. Reports <laughs> from the staff. All right. Um, staff activities is in here. Yeah. One kind of interesting thing is um, HTC 19094, 822 West Jefferson, the house with the, the, the giant um, side yard retaining wall terraces oh, yeah. going oh, in. Oh, gosh. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Their circular staircase did not meet with uh, city code inspectors yeah. um, approvals. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah. They installed a different kind of stair, I know. Oh. So I gave them a staff approval. Well, the, the, it was on the plans. Mm -hmm. the, the first plan for the deck called for a straight stair. Oh. And, it was just a, okay. and then it got lowered down to a patio with a half. It was only a half a circle. Right. It wasn't a full winding staircase. But that didn't work for the code official. So now we're back to the straight stair. That was similar to the one that was mm -hmm. originally approved for the deck. I did not drag them back into the HTC for that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly because it's a non-contributing structure anyway. They they extended the roof over it. Maybe that was always. Gonna no, be, yeah. that was. Okay. Yeah. That was always yeah. Right. Okay. What, what's uh, nineteen oh nine zero front facade change? What front that facade that change. That's something you guys approved. Let's see. I just can't remember. At the June meeting. Oh, that's Grizzly Peak. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's about it for exciting that's stuff. Okay. Report for June. Okay, uh, concerns. Any concerns of the commissioners? Are we going to replace uh, Commissioner Cope with a... Very good question. Yeah, we have um, a new, very qualified applicant mm. who I will not name on TV, but right. um, who I'm hoping uh, to be able to recommend to the mayor and city council, but I have not done that yet. Okay. okay. And that takes several months because they have to do two meetings. They have to do or two something? meetings. They can do them back to back, though. They can be two weeks apart. Oh, two weeks. So apart. it could be as short as like oh. three oh. or four weeks, but probably not in time for the August meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and that's then, assuming that they listen to me and, <laughs> and approve. <laughs> get, get. Right. I'm sure they'll listen to you. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then last month we talked about the historic tax credits mm -hmm. and maybe. Writing a letter, you're yeah. going to find a letter from 10 years ago or yep. something. And yep, um, Mia and I were talking about that oh, recently, good. and okay, I good. have not followed up on that yet. Um, but I want to get out the last recommendation letter and update it and, yes. and uh, have you guys endorse it and get it out. Okay, Great. good. Great. Um, Thank you. Good concerns there. Any other concerns? Moving on to communications. Okay, communications. This yeah, is this month's communication to discuss. The Old West Side News um, had a contractor write an article about uh, mini splits and Haley construction. Or something. Most of it's good and sound, and the problems are there's a large front page photo of something <laughs> that we would absolutely not allow in a historic district. Right. Um, so I think I'm going to have to try to write an op-ed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's to the West Side idea. News and just say, yes, these things are great, but they've got limitations, and 
here considerations in historic districts or on historic properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just for anyone listening at home, yeah. mini splits are the bane of my existence right now. And we do not allow exterior line sets as shown in the photo on the cover of the Old West Side News. So um, yes, uh, somebody brought up earlier that this would be a good topic for a retreat. I agree. I'm not sure um, what that discussion would lead to, but at least we could make some clearer guidelines. Sure. Rather than just saying you can't have line sets on the outside of a house, maybe we say what the alternatives are. You can put them on the inside or you can give us this information about why you can't heat or cool your house any other method or, you know, just um, flesh out some better guidelines for them. Um, it also had a line about how you may have to get your neighbor's approval to put this on the back of your house in a historic mm -hmm. district. Well, um, do, correct me if I'm wrong, but homeowners should be getting uh, permits to install these because it's yeah. a system extension. Yeah, the, so the trouble with what happens there. The trouble with little mechanicals like this is that the contractors often go ahead and do the work, as we saw earlier tonight, yeah, case in point. and mm -hmm. then come back, and and then and then we're left in the situation that we were in earlier tonight. So. Um, there may be a public education component yeah. to right. this as well. Mm -hmm. in, in, traditionally, though, it's, it's a staff approval. A mechanical the equipment that's out of sight is a staff approval, right. but, in, um, but on the staff approval list, it also says that mini sp uh, um, uh, line sets, exterior line sets, yeah. uh, may not be approved by staff. Oh, okay. Yeah because of prior good. troubles on Hill Street and other places. Okay, that good clarification there. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so it's something worth talking about and, and I'll get in touch with the West Side News and um, see if I can clarify. I think that okay. would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that the only communication? That is the only communication. Okay, adjournment. Uh, there being no further business, and without objection, I adjourn the July 11th, 2019 Ann Arbor Historic District Commission meeting. Let's just pause and look around, make sure no objection. And, uh, meeting adjourned. Okay. All right. Great job. Oh, yeah. Good job, Evan. Well yep. done. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we have a... Hey, thank you for staying yes. around. Stuck around because I need to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what can I help with?